It's a little bit windy today, uh, and I've got my dead cat on my mic, so hopefully that'll block up most of the wind. So hopefully you'll be able to hear me fine. Um, so I'm in my garden today, and my garden's okay. It's not a bad garden. We've, you know, tried to do what we can with it. Uh, maybe the decking could do with a little bit of painting, you know, but it's pretty, pretty good. But every garden hides a dirty, filthy secret. This is mine. There's always that corner which everybody stacks all their piles of crap. So what I've got here is I've had a pallet up to keep the dog in the garden to stop him, stop him running off. And one, it's an eyesore, and two, it's a pain in the neck trying to get um, the pallet open and closed all the time. So what I intend to do is utilize these pallets to make a gate. Now there's a couple of issues I've got here. It's, um, it's very difficult to get a post into the ground on the right of it here because um, it's cut this cement and concrete uh, and there's nothing really to attach it to. This side is fine because I can put a post to the wall. So to overcome that, I'm going to use this shed and put a piece of wood on the shed, but it's a plastic shed. And to overcome that, I'm going to drill through a piece of wood and put it through the shed and bolt it on. So it's fixed to the shed via a, a few bolts. Now I've never done this before. This is a first for me. Um, most of my DIY projects have a first. I'm not an expert in anything. I just tend to you know, research some YouTube videos, um, maybe look online for some stuff, and then I just dive straight in. <laughs> so, let's get started. Okay, so, it's not as easy as I first thought it was going to be. <laughs> These pallets, I think, have been built by the gods. They're the strongest pallets I've ever seen. Um, so I've tried to hammer them off with a chisel and split them apart from the from the fittings but no deal so what I've done now I've taken this off I've sawed it off and if you're going to use a saw make sure you get a decent wood saw because this goes through these like butter uh, so haha <laughs> gods I've got a saw that beats you but I sawed them off on here these points to see if I can try and manipulate this now to, to get off this because I want this piece of wood here I'm trying to get off is a nightmare just bear with me with it. It's okay, so I'm now going to try and get it off. Okay, and once I've got that off, what I'll do then is just hammer these nails through and then this piece of wood should come off then without splitting it. Then I can use it, so I'll just carry on. <laughs> okay, after what seemed like um, about three months trying to get into these pallets, trying with hand saws and hammering, it's not working. Um, so why you make the mistakes so you don't have to? So when I'm doing these things for the first time, a lot of us are first time DIYers, we don't know what we're doing. So um, what I'm going to do now is time for the power tools. Pallet, you're going down. Okay, so what I'm doing is leaving this on. Okay? Leaving this little piece of wood on rather than trying to hammer it off and the wood falls apart. It's a bit of a pain in the neck, but we'll work around it. So, once you cut through it, you've only got this little piece of wood to come off, and it actually comes off. Uh, I'm going to say pretty easy, but <laughs> there you go. It's just much easier to get off, and it doesn't break the wood. And all you got to do then is get rid of these things and just hammer them down. Um, much easier, <laughs> and I must have done that in the first place. So what I'm doing with these these nails that's in here, it's very hard to straighten them up and try and hammer them out. 
Um, so what I'm doing is just pinching them here, snipping them off. Okay, and then it then is that more uh, more likely to stay straight when you hammer it out. get them on the other side just use your claw hammer then just to cut them out and as simple as that so I just realized I made a huge schoolboy error be so frustrated with these pallets when I've been cutting this wood I haven't worn any PPE so I got very lucky on my first cut um, not to get anything in my eyes and uh, not a death of myself so it's really important rule one don't be a dickhead like me make sure you wear your PPE <laughs> okay so let's carry on cutting this now uh, with my PP on and keep on going. words and swearing I finally got all my wood ready so I'm just gonna um, just sand it down a little bit not that have to be marvelous it's a garden gate it doesn't really matter and it's only a temporary gate until I get the drive done uh, put a proper fence up um, so I'm not gonna make it um, I'm not gonna do much to it yet, but I just want to sand it down take all the rough spots off and um, just clean it up a little bit before I uh, paint it having a brew gotta have a bit of a break have a cup of tea and um it's coming along fine now now i've got the wood off it should be plain sailing i hope uh so yeah all the wood's all sanded now i'm just gonna lay it down and then build the gate and then we're gonna attach it to the wall so the gap i want to put the gate in is 104 centimeters this is it is going to go against the wall and that's that's four and a half centimeters okay so I need to take four and a half centimetres off that gap, 103 centimetres, which is 98.5 centimetres. And I'm not a maths genius or anything, I've got it written down here, we worked it out earlier. Uh, so that, but you want a little bit of a wiggle room on the gate, about half a mil each side. So probably about 98, 97 and a half centimetres is about right. I'm going to cut this to about 97 and a half, 98. So what I've done now, I've matched this corner up to that corner, and that corner to that corner. I'm going to make a mark here and a mark here, okay, and cut that across from that corner to here and the same the other side. So cut the cut the ends off there. It worked out fine. So it's finally starting to take shape now, um, eventually. Uh, all I've got to do now is just uh, screw it all together. So what I've done, I've measured them all with a tri-square now. I'm going to put one screw on this side in each one just to hold it in. And I'm also going to put two on the other side to make it nice and strong. And when you, obviously, just make sure the screws you're using don't uh, go through both pieces of wood. So you want to make sure that, as you can see, that's going to stop just short of the other side. It make it nice and strong, but it won't go through to the other side. Okay, so I've got the gate up. It's not fitted or anything. I'm just trying to the size. I'm going to be, be attaching this to the wall. Now what I know what I what I had to do is a pipe running across the wall here, so I had to cut a piece out of the pipe. And what I'm also doing is treating the back of it here, uh, and I'll treat in there with a bit of a wood preserve, because once it's on the wall, you can never get behind it to paint it. So make sure it's all treated before you put it on. So 
what I'm going to do now is just treat the wood a little bit before I hang the gate. Uh, I'm, wrap I'm wrapping up now for the day, and I'll finish it off tomorrow now. Um, Night's drawn in, it's getting a bit late, my daughter needs to go to bed, and I'm making too much noise. <laughs> okay, but I'm going to just treat the back of the gate, it's easier, um, especially the bottom of the gate, because again, w when the gate is on, it's hard to get on the bottom of the, the wood, so um, it's best to treat it before you hang it. Okay, um, I'll just finish painting this and I'll see you tomorrow. Welcome back. Day two of uh, pallet gate, gate pallet, whatever you want to call it. Um, so now I'm putting the post or the pillar to the wall. I'm going to be using these hammer fixings. So if you haven't seen them before, basically all it is is a, uh, a sleeve there. That goes in there. You put that in the hole hammer that in and that stays in there and the good thing about these is you can actually screw them out so if you ever want to take them out they screw out no problem at all but it's just very it's a lot easier these are a lot easier and they're pretty strong and once they're in there uh, they're in there solidly so i need an eight mil drill bit an eight mil drill bit still early in the morning sorry if you're in america it's one five eighths of a fifth quarter uh, divided by three and then a fifth and uh, so yeah and um, what I'm gonna do if you can see don't know if you can see that so it's got a bit of a lip on there so what I'm gonna do is use a countersink just countersink it just a little bit on the wood um, so it's sitting in nice and flush with the with the wood so I've got my countersink in just there so now I'm just gonna countersink all the all the holes I've already drilled a hole at the top, um, just to demonstrate them. I'll do this first and then I'll straighten up the, the pillar or the post um, so I get it straight so it, it fixes it in just to hold it in position. And as you can see, that's in there very strong. I tried to do it this way to show you, but I, I felt like it was a bit like, <laughs> so I had to come this way so I didn't block you because I feel a bit more stronger that way anyway. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put this pipe up here. So as I said yesterday, I, I cut a little bit of piece of the wood so I can put this, this trunk in in there. Okay, and what I wanna do then is make sure this is level okay so that's nice and level now look that where you are you that's nice and level now so I've got my spirit level on there saying that's about right there. perfect there perfect there okay that's bobble so, I'm gonna go ahead and um, pop these and uh, make the other three holes now. Now, I don't want to pop my drill bit all the way in because it's not quite long enough. And also with the cult, I think it's going to sit just a little, like a mill deeper. So I'm going to just bring the drill bit out a little bit. Hopefully that'll hold. And then that should be long enough then to make it deep enough um, for the hammer fixing to sit right in there. Okay, I've put the camera on the other side now because I have to do it this way. And I don't want you seeing the crack in my bum when I'm bending over and my jeans fall down like a workman smile. So I'm going to do it this side. Okay. That's stuck on there like poop to a blanket. That ain't going anywhere. But like I said, if you ever want to take them out, you just unscrew them. Bam! And I'll just pull it off. Okay, so that's all done. I'm going to give that a paint now and start attaching the gate to the post. So the most important thing at the moment is I've got my brew. Bam. Now, what I'm going to do is attach the hinges to the gate. Now, what I didn't realise was 
is that you need to really have your hinges where this comes here but, uh, but so I should have put this the other way around that way bit of an error know that for next time but there we are it is what it is it's not our heavy gate it should be fine on this side it should be fine when you sit these down I don't know if you can see that but where, where that line is there that's what lines up to the edge of the wood here okay and I have drawn a line here as well on the wood and then so when I put it on these two screw holes I will line up to the line there so that's central and then go ahead and screw it now what I found is I've got some screws here which is fine in this piece of wood because you've got the two pieces but actually here it's longer it'll go through so luckily I looked at my toolbox and I had some shorter screws so they're not going to go through so that's 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 a bit of luck right cheers I'm going to finish my brew and then put these in so I've had my cuppa I'm ready to rock and roll let's have a look at this so I'm just going to line up these holes now to the to the line I've drawn and then pop in the screw there. what I've done I found this in my shed uh, it's some black sort of rust proof anti rust proof paint so what I thought was I'll just spray the screw heads with that just a little bit on the top just to give them a bit more longevity okay just to keep you know stop them rusting and also it's a bit it's a bit more aesthetic to the eye when they're all black I've got the gate propped up on a pile of wood on the floor I'll show you that just so you can see just so I can get the first screw in once the first screws in I can then adjust it then uh, to, to level it out and hopefully this is going to hold I'm just going to see there we are before I put the rest of the screws in before I put the rest of the screws in I just want to make sure because at the bottom of here I mean whoever had this house before us was a bit like oh yeah because they've put a big concrete piece on the floor here I'll just show you that now If you can see this concrete bit here so I need the gate to be able to cover that so I'm just making sure the clearance and actually that's absolutely fine so I'm just gonna go ahead and put the rest of the screws in so the gate is finally on and it's all working well yay I got a gate no more pallets fantastic no more smashing my feet on when I got only got my sandals on Okay, and then here we are. So all I've got to do now, I need to put this pattern on here, down there like that. Okay, and then what I'm going to do then is put on, put on a bolt just to secure that on there. And that's all I've got to do. And that's it. Job done. So what I've done, I've drilled a hole here, here, and here. And then obviously I can't screw anything into that. It's just plastic. It won't hold very long. So I've got bolts with a locking nut to go on the back of it inside the shed and so that's going to go through there put the bolt on the back tighten that up and I should hold it really tight then now this is where you're going to need two people because you need me on this side screwing in the screw and me on this side holding the bolt so I got a bit of an issue <laughs> so luckily my father-in-law has just come round and he's going to hold the bolt for me. Yes. 
keys in the shed holding the bolt. Okay, that's on my solid now. Thank you. <laughs> what that's left to do now is to fit this bolt lock on. Like that. And it's job done. Just gonna go ahead and finish that now. And the battery's gone. Um, typical impatient me. I can't be bothered to wait for the drill to charge, the battery to charge for the drill, sorry. So I'm gonna go old school. Don't know if any of you remember this. This is a screwdriver. So I'm gonna use that instead. <laughs> so all finished, all done. So it looks a little bit tidier now. It's a little less crappy on the crapometer. I got a gate now instead of a pallet I can open and close. That's a bonus. Yes. Is it perfect? No. This wall's going that way, the shed's going this way, the floor's going that way, and a bad worker always blames everything else but him. And I'm sure a good carpenter would have, would have sorted out those issues with the walls going this way and stuff. But I'm not experiencing this, it's my first time I've done it. I'm pretty happy with what I've done. What have I learned? Um, well, the first thing is, whatever you do, if you're gonna make a gate out of a pallet, make sure the pallet is not one of these indestructible pallets made for industry uh, that's built like a tank. Because the bulk of the t my time was stripping down the pallets. It took forever and it almost killed me. And the rest of it was pretty downhill. Um, so that's what I've learned from that is make sure you've got the right pallets for the job and make sure they're not these industrial pallets that are super strong. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.